this election season, the Election Commission of India has been under immense scrutiny and has come under criticism several times, be it for its failure to curb hate speech or because they are not actually releasing the voter uh, turnout data and absolute numbers, the election commission is now being asked to either grow a spine or resign. Recently, a section of activists from civil society, citizen groups, and even former bureaucrats approached uh, uh, election commission in different parts of the country and submitted a memorandum. My guest today is one such person. I'm being joined by transparency activist Anjali Bharatwaj, who met the election commission officials in Mumbai. But before I go across to her, a quick appeal from all of us here at the News Minute. For us, being independent not just means that not taking any sponsorship from corporates or from governments, but it also means taking up people's voices and questioning those in power like the election commission. We've been following this story very closely and we need your support to continue being independent. So if you like the work we do, then make sure that you check out our reporting fund so you can support our reporters or you could even become a paid TNM subscriber. How you can do both? The links are in the description below. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, if you can just recap, what are the different inactions and lapses that we've seen uh, or from Election Commission of India this election season? Look, uh, it's very important that the Election Commission of India, which is mandated by the Constitution to make sure that elections in the country are free and fair, be doing its duties in a completely independent and in a non-selective manner. Now, what we are seeing, unfortunately, and this is not just this time, but this was something we noticed even in the 2019 elections, is that when uh, there are complaints of the violation of the model code of conduct, unfortunately, the kind of action that the Election Commission of India has been taking is very selective. So if there are complaints against leaders of the opposition parties, there is action that's taken with great alacrity. But if there are complaints of violation of the model code of conduct, of hate speeches against the ruling party uh, leadership, uh, the actions of the election commission are wanting. And we saw in the 2019 elections that happened repeatedly. And in fact, at that time, the election commissioner, one of the election commissioners, Mr. Ashok Lavasa, when he tried to put in a dissent note uh, to, say that, uh, to say that he w did not agree with this kind of selective action, uh, he, uh, we saw, was in many senses forced to resign. So we are seeing this time around as well that when there are hate speeches that are being made by uh, by leaders of the bjp including the prime minister the election commission is not taking the kind of action that needs to be taken when uh, recently the prime minister made uh, certain speeches which were very communal in nature and complaints were filed uh, the election commission did not act till there was a lot of public pressure and even then, when the action was taken, it was basically in the form of a notice which was not sent to the Prime Minister, but to the BJP President, Mr. J.P. Nadda, in which the Prime Minister was not even named. It simply said that some of your star campaigners seem to be making speeches and they need to be reined in. So this really sends out a signal to people during election times that the Election Commission is not functioning in an independent and in a fair manner. And I think that it really destroys the level playing field potentially, which is very dangerous in, uh, during election times. And it also uh, leads to the plummeting of discourse during uh, elections, the political discourse, then, th because it sends out a signal then that if the ruling party leaders are saying anything which is violative of the model code of conduct, uh, even that will not be taken uh, notice of or action against properly. So this is very, very concerning. The other issue, which I think is very concerning to citizens, uh, <clears throat> is the lack of transparency in the voter turnout this time. Uh, for the first time, we are seeing that the election commission is putting out voter turnout data in terms of percentages instead of telling people the absolute number of people who turned out to vote. Now, this is uh, something which is coupled with the fact 
that uh, usually what the election commission does, the practice, the norm is that within 24 hours, the election commission's uh, commission uh, within the conclusion of a polling in a phase, within 24 hours, the election commission puts out the data of voter turnout. This time after phase one, the election commission took 11 days. After phase two, it took nearly five days to put out data on voter turnout. Like I said, even then, it did not put out the absolute numbers. It put out percentages. And there was an unusually high increase in voter turnout. So when the initial figures were put out uh, by the election commission, they were stood at around 60%. But after 11 days, when the figures were revised, they were revised upwards by 6%. And this is not the kind of increase in voter turnout that one usually observes. No explanation was given to citizens. So this has led people to have serious doubts about what is happening, why is the voter turnout figure not being disclosed by the election commission, and people have now asked the election commission to give this uh, absolute number and also to give the authenticated uh, form, which is form 17C part 1, which is signed by the presiding officer at the polling station and also by polling agents who are present there, which is the authenticated record of voter turnout. And despite repeatedly people writing, citizens writing to the election commission, they have not done the needful. Now, of course, the matter is in the Supreme Court and the court has asked the election commission to explain why it's not doing that. And now the court has given the election commission uh, a couple of days to come back and explain why it's not putting out absolute numbers and why uh, part one of form 17C is not being disclosed by the election commission. Uh, before I get to the hate uh, speech part, uh, if you can explain to our viewers why exactly giving out the actual voter number is important and why just you know giving it in percentages is not enough. That's one part of my question. And the second part of my question is about the revision. Uh, is this the first time that we've seen, uh, like you mentioned rightly, 11 and 5 days uh, for the uh, for the revision to take place? Because yes, it is uh, when they give it out on the uh, day of the polling, it is an initial estimate, which is usually a rough estimate. But does it usually go up by 6 to 7 percent? Uh, is that something we've seen in the past? So the answer to both your questions, uh, um, essentially, is that the election commission has to, and it has been the norm, it's something they've been doing consistently, that they give out not just percentages of voter turnout, but also the absolute numbers. Now, it's important to understand why we want absolute numbers. See, when you're talking about such large number of people going out to vote, if I'm given percentages, even if it is up to the second decimal point, if there is a change uh, in the absolute numbers, it, it could give a leeway of thousands of votes, which could affect the electoral, uh, you know, the kind of uh, electoral result that we can expect later as well. It can potentially uh, have a bearing on that. So it's very important that the election commission be totally transparent and give absolute numbers and not simply percentages when it is declaring how many people came out to vote. And you see, percentages are not uh, something figures that come out of the air. They are actually uh, there are form 17C part one, which is filled in by the presiding officer on every polling station at every polling station. The presiding officer sends this to the returning officer who then collates it for the constituency and gives it to the election commission. And when the election commission aggregates these figures, that's how they arrive at the percentages. So the election commission has access to the absolute numbers from where the percentages are being calculated. So it's very important that to ensure public trust and in the interest of transparency, absolute numbers be given out. The second uh, factor is this increase, this unusually high increase. Usually we do see an increase of about three percentage points or thereabouts, but this time we are seeing that there is an increase of 6% uh, in the voter turnout. 
and the uh, the final figures that are being put out by the election commission is taking such an inordinately long time in terms of even just putting out the percentages 11 days after phase 1 uh, got over now if you look at the data that is now clear even if we use the percentages to look at how much increase in voter turnout it is showing we don't know the exact numbers but it's nearly 1.07 crore people who the uh, election commission is saying that the the number has gone up by more than one crore voters so the voter turnout when the election commission announced that these many voters have come out at the end of the uh, polling day if you compare it to the final uh, turnout that the election commission is giving percentages and you convert it it's more than a crore now that's a very very large number so naturally there are questions people uh, people wonder and especially in a climate where the election commission seems to be action, acting selectively does not seem to be acting entirely independently in a situation where appointments to the election commission happened in a manner which were which left a lot of doubt in the minds of people all of this when this is happening it raises serious doubts in the minds of citizens which is very counterproductive in a democracy so when we say that elections uh, and the whole electoral process needs to happen in a completely transparent manner that really is important for people to be able to repose public trust in the electoral process and that finally leads to trust in the electoral outcomes which is so important in a democracy so i think that uh, these three factors which we have seen one uh, the inordinate delay in putting out final figures of voter turnout to not putting it out in absolute numbers uh, phase after phase and this is despite uh, citizens consistently uh, telling the election commission writing to the election commission that please put out absolute numbers it's instead of percentages uh, instead of uh, absolute numbers it's percentages that are being put out and the third thing that the high increase and usually high uh, rise in the voter turnout these three things have shaken people's confidence in the voter turnout figures that they are being given by the election commission so uh, puja let me clarify uh, to begin with that uh, i am certainly not casting any aspersions i am simply saying as a, as someone who has consistently uh, demanded transparency in government functioning in the functioning of different public authorities across the country uh, we are not saying that there has to be wrongdoing and therefore people should know people in a democracy have a right to know it's an it's a fundamental right it's a constitutional right it has been upheld as such by the supreme court of india no less even in the electoral bonds matter the supreme court so categorically said that voters citizens have a right to know in a democracy so this is uh, the, what is happening right now is that there is a certain secrecy in with which the election commission is approaching the the declaration of the voter turnout and that unfortunately globally anywhere if it happens in any institution it raises many doubts including doubts of wrongdoing so while uh, i don't think many people are saying that something has necessarily been done that would have to we'll have to look at evidence a lot of uh, you know uh, things would have to come out but to be able to even have public trust in the electoral process transparency is very very important and when the election commission despite citizens writing we uh, some of us got together and wrote about 10 days ago more than 10 days ago to the election commission uh, there was no response the letter then was signed by uh, thousands of people across the country some of us in a small delegation then went and submitted that letter to the election commission in which the demand was that to ensure trust in the electoral process there is need for transparency in the process and therefore the election commission must not hesitate to put out absolute numbers of voter turnout and uh, may, should make public 
uh, part one of form 17c the election commission hasn't done it the supreme court asked the election commission what the problem was with doing it the election commission said no uh, you know that we we don't believe that we should do it and uh, they're refusing to basically comply with this very basic requirement of transparency so i think that that kind of really uh, uh, in many senses and i don't blame voters and citizens then if they feel that there might be something wrong that is happening otherwise you know we've seen that uh, you know why would any institution want to work behind a veil of secrecy uh, the data is out there the Supreme Court itself asked the Election Commission that if you're bringing out percentages, surely you have the absolute numbers. You can't be calculating percentages without absolute numbers. What is the problem with sharing absolute numbers? And it's been done regularly, to which the Election Commission Council basically said that sometimes there is a mismatch between the voter turnout and then the EVM, uh, you know, the number of uh, votes that are counted. But if there is a clear cogent explanation for that mismatch that can be given to citizens they of course understand it if there is a properly reasoned um, you know cause given for that the one cannot hide behind secrecy and saying we won't share information because there might be a mismatch now that kind of argument really erodes public trust and i think that that then leads to these kind of concerns that something might be amiss and there might be a possibility that uh, you know there is wrongdoing that is happening i want to go back to the issue of hate speech uh, and we've seen like you rightly said you know even the prime minister of the country uh, indulging in a series of uh, of attacks against minorities muslims in particular multiple times a day in some some occasions and uh, you know the ec's reluctance to, to act against BJP, not just the Prime Minister, but even BJP, Karnataka's post has not been taken down, even till date, uh, it still exists. Uh, so what does this show? Uh, is there any doubt that there is absolutely any independence at all? Or, or do you think there can still be an explanation? Look, there is no explanation for selective action by a body that is supposed to act, act in a fair and independent manner. So if there is a violation of the model code of conduct, we are not saying that uh, if there is, it is done by an opposition party, there should not be action. But certainly, one cannot say that action will only be taken or seem to be taken or in a strong way be taken when it is a leader of an opposition party. And the same violation or even more grievous violations in some cases, uh, the complaints that have come, uh, against uh, the ruling party leadership that will not be acted upon with the same kind of responsiveness and urgency. And there, there can be no excuse, uh, Puja, for something like that. But let me say that, uh, you know, when one talks about the independence and people's trust in an institution, it's also very important that, uh, you know, some of these things uh, be worked on in a democracy very, very carefully at every step of the way. Uh, so I would like to remind your viewers that uh, there has been a long history um, in the last, uh, you know, year uh, where we've seen how the Supreme Court passed a very, very significant judgment in which they said that and they looked at uh, all the evidence that was put in front of them and they said that the selection of election commissioners must be done by an independent committee. And the Supreme Court said that till an appropriate law uh, is brought in, uh, which ensures independent selection of the election commissioners, there should be a body of the prime minister, uh, the leader of opposition and the chief justice of India, three people who will select the election commissioners so that this particular body, when it is conducting elections, uh, you know, it's really very clear to citizens that this body is not at all biased. It is uh, not comprising of people who might be acolytes of the ruling party or any other party. And therefore, people have trust in the election commission. Now, unfortunately, we saw that very quickly after the Supreme Court judgment, the government 
brought in and pushed a bill and it became law which basically said that the selection committee of the election commissioners will comprise uh, the prime minister the leader of opposition and a minister from the cabinet so this time we had uh, the prime minister mr amit shah the home minister and the leader of opposition who selected the election commissioners just shortly before the elections took place and even when that selection was happening the leader of opposition uh, very uh, widely it was reported in the media came out and said that uh, it, the names of the shortlisted candidates were also not shared with him they were they were shared with him just a few minutes before the meeting took place and therefore when selections were made of the election commissioners there was already a very big doubt that was cast on the integrity of the election commission and that election at uh, the selection process of the election commissioners now when that happens um, you know and the the worry that people then carry is that it's probably people who are close to the administration of the ruling dispensation who have been selected as, as election commissioners in that sort of a situation it is even more important that the election commission function transparently let not just things be done fairly and independently let them also be seen to be done independently and fairly and in that environment and climate when for the first time we start seeing uh, information being suppressed when absolute numbers of voter turnout is not given out when we are seeing that there is selective action that is being taken in favor of the ruling party and against the opposition it really then causes alarm it causes a discomfort among citizens and in fact uh, the election commission council in the supreme court said uh, you know uh, about the petitioners who were asking for transparency said that you know these kind of questions dissuade first time voters from coming into vote i mean uh, you know nothing can be more ironic than that because what causes people to lose interest in participating in the electoral process if they feel their vote won't count if they feel that what might be happening is you know much beyond their control they have no way of knowing what is happening so transparency can only lead to greater trans, uh, greater participation it mm -hmm. can only enthuse people to come out and participate and vote which is really what the election commission is about and what they have been repeatedly saying please come out and vote they have been appealing to voters and um, you know all of this um, is very important and i think that when we are seeing the action on whether it is on hate speech other violations of the model code of conduct of the election commission it needs to be seen in this larger context and and uh, appreciated in this larger context so my, that brings me to my last question given the election commission's uh, response uh, when uh, citizens like you activists like you approach them the fact that they're not even willing to engage or uh, be forthcoming with their responses do you worry that you know there is a shadow cast on whether or not the elections are free and fair at all and if there is a level playing field at all this time around absolutely i think uh, what is very worrying and this is something that was brought out by the citizens commission on elections which was a uh, a group that was set up under the chairpersonship of uh, justice lokur who is a retired judge of the supreme court um was that for uh, elections to be free and fair in any democracy and in india uh, specifically if we were to talk in that context it's very important that the election commission play the role of an independent referee that it is supposed to to ensure an uh, to ensure a level playing field to ensure that every every vote counts uh, in our democracy now what we are seeing is unfortunately even when we went in a delegation to give uh, the uh, letter to the election commission asking for greater transparency in the voter turnout um, nobody in the commission not just the commissioners not even any officers of the uh, the election commission were willing to talk to uh, the citizens in fact we were even told that there are no public dealing uh, hours when we said that we could come back in a public dealing hour uh, 
they said that uh, you know there are no public dealing hours now imagine in a democracy uh, during elections if citizens want to submit a memorandum which in in this particular case it was signed by thousands of people across the country um you know or explain uh, their concerns to someone in the commission there was no way to get anybody to even engage with citizens which really also puts out sends out a very very concerning uh, signal uh, to citizens and and i think that uh, the uh, the role of the commission has to be uh, very very strong in terms of the action that it uh, takes so that a very strong signal is sent out that the model code of conduct will be uh, upheld uh, it, the signal needs to be uh, not selective it needs to be seen to be fair and balanced and it needs to be uh, you know uh, uniform where for the same kind of um, sort of violation one can't see that you know a notice is also not sent to one uh, person because they happen to be from a certain party or holding a certain post but uh, you know someone else might be given a totally different and a much more stringent uh, uh, punishment for the same um, also like i said that uh, for people to have faith that their vote counts for people to have faith in the final electoral result uh, the voter turnout is critical and uh, like i said the election commission must take every step to show that it is working transparently to work transparently and to be accountable to the people of the country because finally you know i mean it, it, it we we are a democracy it has many aspects it's not just elections but elections are one of the most fundamental aspects and free and fair elections are the most fundamental aspects of a democracy and uh, for for people to continue to have uh, faith in the electoral process it's very important that the election commission be above board and function properly i thank you for joining me and also uh, thank on behalf of the citizens for taking uh, this fight up uh, uh, to the election commission we can only hope that uh, some answers uh, will come over the next few days thank you thank you thank you puja this election season your right to choose puts you at the heart of it again we'd like to be your eyes and ears choose the journalism and media that serves democracy and you Simply head on to newslaundry.com/slash subscription and pick up the TNMNL joint subscription of your choice today.